My grandfather was saved in his late 20s and the gospel message revolutionized his life. He was so glad to be saved and so glad to be free from sin that he started to tell everyone about the Lord Jesus everywhere he went. He was working in a hosiery mill at the time and dozens and dozens of people were saved as a result of his witness. Nine of those men that were in that hosiery mill came out and became preachers. And before he left that hosiery mill, all the employees got together and bought him a very large tent and he used that tent to hold evangelistic meetings all across the South. He'd hold those meetings and people would be saved and people were saved by the thousands. Churches were started all over the Southern communities of our nation. In 1957, my grandfather and grandmother came to South Florida with a desire to start a church. They didn't have any money to speak of. They didn't have a lot of resources, but what they had was a call of God in their life and a love for the gospel and a real passion to see people saved. And so they started a church in their home, the little community here in Fort Lauderdale called North Andrews Gardens. And my grandfather would walk those communities, knocking doors, inviting folks to church. Uh, the way he made money was he would sell coupon books from door to door. And of course, he didn't make a lot of money doing that, but he made enough so that he could hold services and start that church and see people come and see people be saved. And we have a church today because of the sacrifice that he made and that my grandmother made. And I say when he died, he did not leave a legacy of money. He didn't have any money. But what he did leave us is a legacy of a love for the gospel. He made the decision in his life that the gospel mattered and that any sacrifice that he would make for it was worth it. My Uncle Jerry Williamson became the second pastor of our church in March of 1979. For 35 years, he and my Aunt Sylvia worked tirelessly both in the church and in the school because they loved the gospel and because they wanted people to be saved and they knew that the church was valuable to this community. And they sacrificed greatly for the cause of Christ. They gave of themselves and they gave of their resources. Truthfully, they gave everything they had to the cause of Christ and to the spread of the gospel. And they weren't the only ones. There were others that sacrificed alongside of them. I mean, there's really too many people to name that came alongside of them and they gave and they labored and they sacrificed for the sake of the gospel and God used it mightily. Every generation of believers has been faced with the same question. And the question is, is the gospel worthy of my sacrifice? Am I willing to sacrifice so that people can be saved? The reason that I believe we were left with the responsibility to develop this property and build this building is because God wanted us to answer that question. In 2019, we had a deacons meeting that I'll, I'll never forget. Most of our site work was done and we had yet to start building the building. And I told the men, I said, man, we don't, we don't have the money to build that building. We're not even close. We're millions of dollars away. And we don't have the money to finish it. We have some to start, but we'll never finish it with the money that we have. And the men unanimously said something that I really appreciated and that I'll never forget. They said, listen, we need to take a step of faith. And having this church and this community is worthy of our sacrifice. And so we took a step of faith and God's people began to sacrifice and God did some wonderful things as a result of that. In 2017, we took our first building program offering and we really worked hard and the people sacrificed and the offering was $230,000 in May of that year. And I remember thinking, man, that is an enormous offering for the people of our church. They really sacrificed and gave. But then as I began to think about it, I thought, man, it's not even enough. It won't even put a dent in the amount of money that we need to finish this project. And so I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do. The people sacrificed wonderfully well, but it's not enough. And God said, go back to him again and take another offering in December. And I said, Lord, I'm embarrassed to go back to them again and take another offering in the same year. And he says, you need to do it. You need to ask them to sacrifice again. And so in December, we took another offering 
and the offering that we took was nearly $170,000. And so for 2017, our people gave $400,000, over $400,000. And over the past six or seven years, our church has given almost two and a half million dollars just to the build, building program of our church. And can I just say, that's, that is not the only way that our people sacrificed, and that is not the only way that God enabled us. When we needed people's help, God brought the people. When we needed materials to be given, God brought the materials. I mean, God blessed and enabled us in every way to do what we were not capable of doing on our own. And now, we're sitting here and the realization of our building has come and God has been incredibly good. It's important for us to remember that this building and this property belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to Him. And we want it to be used as a tool to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are headed for eternity and they need to be saved and it's the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation. May this building be solely dedicated to the spread of the gospel, not only in, in this community in which we live, but, but all around the world. Is the gospel worthy of our sacrifice? It is. It surely is. We have one life to live. Let's live it for the sake of the gospel.